everybody, this is Christine Bertram and I'm coming to you live from the hive, woohoo, here on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> wow, it, it is so weird <laughs> for me to be live with a class on a Sunday afternoon, you guys. <laughs> this is the only Sunday class that I do live and it's the Let's Just Stamp card class and it just is weird. <laughs> I don't generally do classes on Sunday, and this one felt really even more weird <laughs> to do than normal. So, hi, Mary Ann. Hi, Penny. And I know that a bunch of you commented that you're excited for class and you're going to be watching. So, that's super awesome. We do have a smaller class today. I think I have about 13 people that signed up. Actually, 14 because Carissa just signed up. I got to add her name on here. And Pat just signed up. So, yay. I gotta write these people down, otherwise I won't do roll call with them. And they, it literally just started. So, um, afternoon sunshine from Florida, woohoo! All right, now I got names written down. Hi, Randy, hi, Denise, woohoo! Hi, Carissa. <laughs> I just got your name written down for class, you guys. <laughs> so Carissa gave me an idea and I just realized that it's these glasses. So it was about a year ago and I fell asleep with my glasses on. And I, I laid in bed, fall, I fell asleep while I had my papers in front of me. I must have slept so good that I didn't wake up until about six in the morning. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Laura. Hi, Susan. Hi, Jeannie. I woke up at six in the morning with my glasses still on my face. And after that happened, I realized I started to get this little sore on my nose, right on the bridge of my nose here from wearing my glasses and I only wear my glasses. Hi Arliss, I only wear my glasses for when I do lives, for when I'm working at the computer and potentially nighttime driving. That's it, I don't wear my glasses otherwise. And so when I wear my glasses all day long, hi Hillary, uh, at work, because when I go into the office, I wear my glasses all day and my, com my head is like right next to the <laughs> computer screen because my eyesight's not good. I started to get headaches from that spot. So you guys, I just went to adjust my glasses and it was hurting. Uh, and Carissa said to me, well, why don't you put some dimensionals as nose pads? And so I did. And I don't know if you guys can see, I've got, I've got two, two black dimensionals on my glasses. And I should have, and I, I used the black ones so they would, um, hi Barbara, so they would blend in with my glasses. And I should have left the little papers on because even though they're not sticky to the touch, they stick to the bridge of my nose. So I go to move them and they want to pull up my skin on my nose. <laughs> so that's what just happened. Hi, Alice. <laughs> uh, no, a flat tire. That's not good, but you're watching. So hopefully this brings a little joy to you, <laughs> to you today. So thanks for sharing, Randy. So you guys, I literally went, and normally I wear my purple glasses, which they don't have dimensionals on them yet. <laughs> so, so I went to move my glasses just like about five minutes ago, right when the live started, and I couldn't move them. And I'm like, they're stuck. They pulled up my nose. So anyways, you guys, when in doubt and you need help, you can, instead of using duct tape, think about dimensionals. <laughs> they serve many purposes. <laughs> and so, yeah, so that's my story about my glasses, you guys. So if I go to move them. <laughs> so what happened is after a while, it went away because there's times where I won't wear my glasses a lot and it'll heal. And over the last two weeks, I've been wearing my glasses a little bit more and it started to hurt. Um, in that spot, which started to give me headaches. And so I was working with Carissa <laughs> this past week and she said to put dimensionals. And so, hi, Donna. Oh, thanks for sharing, Alice. I really appreciate it. So hi, Julie Bierschbach. Okay, so that's my dimensional story that I didn't have any thought of talking about today, but I just thought it just happened and it was random. <laughs> so, so yeah, you guys, I was gonna tell you guys something. What is today, Sunday? Oh, so... You guys always ask, not always, not all of you, but some of you guys ask, well, when do I sleep? <laughs> How do I get, like, when do I get sleep? Hi, Linda Hodge. Like, do I, you guys think I'm up all night. And I am usually, like, during the week, I burn the midnight oil. I burn the candle at both ends. Hi, Luann Johnson. And so, you guys, you ask me when I sleep. And I thought I'd tell you when I sleep because I just realized that I slept all morning. So, Tyler, you know, so yesterday was card buffet, in person only, and so we had a double header. We had a group in the morning from eight to noon, and then we had an afternoon group from noon until like 4.30ish, and then Tyler was over, <laughs> and 
And um, we did a double header of a movie. We watched two movies, you guys, last night. I have a small collection of movies, maybe like 30 DVDs over the last 15 years of my life. I've collected them. And there were, there were two movies, actually. Um, uh, one wasn't even opened up. So we watched Along Came a Spider. Hi, Becky. Hi, Jennifer. We watched Along Came a Spider with Morgan Freeman. And then we watched Apocalypse that was directed by Mel Gibson. And that movie was still in the packaging. And I probably bought it 15, 10 years ago. I don't know, 2008, 9, whatever. Um, hi, Patricia from Indiana. And so we did a double header movie marathon. And then it came to be one o'clock in the morning. And you guys, I literally slept. We literally slept till 1130. So you ask when I get sleep. So Sunday morning is my sleep in Sundays. If I have nothing going on on a Sunday morning, that is my day to sleep in. And I have no problem sleeping until 1130 or 12. So we literally ate breakfast about an hour ago. <laughs> we cooked eggs and, and had pan, panty cakes. And so, yeah, so my day is literally just beginning with you guys. <laughs> it's two in the afternoon already. So there you go. I do sleep on Sundays. <laughs> but other than that, I get very little sleep and I run on very little sleep. But so inquiring minds want to know. I know Diane Rangi just sent me a card and said, when do you sleep? <laughs> so hi, Mary. Hi, Ethel. So with that being said, you guys, I, uh, it's gotten cooler here in Wisconsin. And I literally actually Tyler did it. He turned on the in-floor heat in the hive today. So it was a, a little bit cool in here. It was 64 degrees when we came in here. And we thought, ooh, it's time to turn the heat on. <laughs> so the in-floor heat is officially on in the hive and in the mud room, AKA the honeycomb room. Um, so, so it's not so cold in here. <laughs> you guys can tell I've got like a light jacket on and uh, a long sleeve shirt. So hi, Millie Kendall. Okay, so what are we doing today, you guys? This is the Let's Just Stamp card class. This is the class that I do uh, with Diane Bogenhagen in conjunction with Diane. So she does the in-person version and then I do the online version. Hi, Brenda. I hope you're having a great day too, as well as everybody else. <laughs> so, so the Let's Just Stamp was actually Tyler's idea <laughs> for a card class. Back in the summertime, Tyler said to me, do you do a card class for beginners? Like, how do people start stamping? How do they learn about stamping? What happens if you've never stamped before? And he's like, you do crazy cards with lots of layers and lots of stuff on them and lots of die cutting. What happens when you get a beginner that doesn't know about all that stuff? And so yet <laughs> another class was born and I couldn't do another class by myself. I wanted to do a class with somebody. So Diane and I get together. Hi, Gail. Diane and I get together once a month and we make the cards together. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Diane. And we, we create the three cards together. Um, in the beginning, it was the first class we did was four cards. But after that, we were like, we want to keep it to three cards. Hi, Linda. Thanks for sharing, Linda. Uh, and so... We, what we do is we try to pick a stamp set that has focal images and words all in one. So if you're just beginning and you really want the stamps to match and the cards to look exactly alike, it would be, it would be the stamp set and then whatever inks. So hi, Judy Kruger. And so, so we designed the cards together. And so on Tuesday night, if anybody's local in the Fond du Lac area, she has um, a nice little class, about eight people, but she still has room in case anybody else wants to join. She teaches the class here in the Hive. You guys, it's my date night on Tuesday. So generally, <laughs> I'm off with Tyler doing something date related. <laughs> and, and then Diane's in here teaching class. Hi, uh, thanks for sharing, Susan. I appreciate it. And so... So that's coming up Tuesday, and then this is the Sunday afternoon class. And thanks for sharing, Judy. So the first class that I did, I always pre preface this, you guys. The first class that I did, I went so in detail for a beginner about what you need. What's it, what are the things that a stamper needs when they first start off? Hi, Jane from Grantsburg, Wisconsin. Um, what, like what, what are the different types of inks, different types of papers, different cutting utensils, cutting um, different adhesives. That video, you guys, all you have to do, it's it's housed in two places. Um, just got done at the, oh, Lewis Farms, that sounds exciting. Um, I've got it housed in two locations. So that video is in Facebook under the Cards by Christine Facebook page. You guys, if you wanna go back and watch it, I went into about an hour, hour and a half of the details and then we made the card. So that was a very long class. Hi, Colleen. Colleen, we need to touch base about your um, monthly cards. And then you also signed up for Fun Folds. And you're on my 
um, my calendar to reach out to you so that we can maybe chat afterwards. Hi, Roberta from Wyoming. And so if you guys are, I, I don't, and then after that, I didn't go into the specifics and the details like I did. And so what I do is at the beginning of every Let's Just Stamp, I refer people. If you're a beginner or you want to go back and watch that video and you missed it, um, I'm by luck. Oh, hi, Arlene. Um, Arlene is by luck. So that's close by too. Okay. So the name of that video is called Let's Just Stamp featuring the Blossoms and Bloom stamp set. And it was done on July 25th. So if anybody wants to go back and watch it, you can go, um, my events calendar actually has the links uh, for Facebook and YouTube. So if you go to my events calendar at cardsbycrispy.com, go backwards in the calendar to July. On the 25th, you could pull that event up and copy and paste those links into either YouTube or into Facebook. And you will be able to, or actually just put those links into the internet and it'll pull those videos up. And so ever since that first video where I went really in depth, I haven't gone that in depth, but during this class, I will talk about things and give you guys some pointers on what to do and what to use. But that video is found in, I, I stored it or uploaded it to YouTube and you can find it in Facebook. Again, it's Let's Just Stamp featuring Blossoms and Bloom. I highly recommend it. So when I have people who are just starting out that don't even know much about me or stamping, I just send them the link to that video and I say, watch this, this will get you going. <laughs> this will get you started. And you guys, I'm always available, not always available, but if you reach out to me, I will get back to you um, in a timely manner and answer questions and try to help you guys as much as possible with your crafting needs. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes like last night, I turned my phone off. Tyler got my attention. We watched two movies. I turned the phone off and I didn't look at it really until 11 o'clock this morning. So that was a, a good window of staying off the phone and he was very happy with me. <laughs> so gotta make the guy happy, right? <laughs> so he makes me happy. Hi, Pam Newhauser. So, all right, so let's just stamp. We have, I believe, 14 people that are doing the class today. Uh, Sandy Wicklander, Deanna Stell, Jeannie Terwilliger, uh, Cindy Runtree, Cheryl Thomas, Karen Wettstein, Patricia Settle, Julie Bierschbach, Barbara Barco, Barbara Godby, Mary Carls, Laura Sullivan, Pat Mater, and Carissa Elbert. So awesome sauce, you guys. Um, so th at the end of class, after we're done making the cards, I am going to announce the door prize winner for the class. I always do a door prize for somebody who places an order to get this class for free. And I also, you guys, the Be Happy Stampers, we had a team challenge that went through the 15th of the month. And so I've pulled all the names. Well, I think I pulled all the names. I might have to go back and look because I believe I pulled the names at 11 o'clock on, on the 15th. And I think somebody responded after that. So I was going to do the Be Happy Stampers team challenge door prize or the prize as well. And you guys, we have four cards. I'm going to flip down so you can see them. I have these four cards from, I did the My Sweet Bundle class from, what month? Oh, September. Hi, Linda Bendick. Hi, Joanne Kitts. My Sweet Bundle class from September was the Harvest Meadow class, or Sweet, which was basically the same stamp set. So I have winners to announce for these four cards. And then also, you guys, I love to show off my Happy Mail at the beginning. And so I know it's not handmade. It is a store-bought card, but it's still a card and I still love it because it is purple. And this is from Naomi, Naomi Worrell and it's got a little B on it, you guys. So any card that I get, I truly appreciate and love. <laughs> so, and you guys, this came from Sandy Wicklander. I believe it was Sandy. Yep. So Sandy, this was the mystery card. Um, and she uh, was included in the little black book um, celebration class because of um, qualifying. And... She made a card, you guys, if you recognize this layout, it is from the Mystery Card Night, which it was last month, which was September. So, and you guys, she sent me these. Oh yes, I try to get back, Judy, as fast as I can. She sent me all these little awesome things. Hi, Kathy King. So she, this is what I include in my card kit. She made some up really pretty for me. She actually die cut them with the scale, or the, what was it, the, oh, the die cuts that are the um, sweet, Stitch So Sweetly die cuts. And so I didn't sign this card before I sent it off to you, but it holds my warmest thoughts, invisible but true. And if you find the time you need to brighten someone's day, then take this card and sign it and send it on its way. So whenever I send out cards that are not wedding cards, 
or sympathy cards. So those are the cards I do handwrite in. Um, I do write in my um, congratulation cards to my team and my new um, newbie cards. But otherwise, I always include one of those little kits or those little slips in um, my my cards so that you guys can give my card another life. <laughs> I never want to think about my cards being thrown in the garbage. And so I always include that so that a card can keep going and keep going and keep going. Like, I love it when cards get reused and used and used. <laughs> so, um, and also for you guys that handwrite in your cards um, and give them to me, I, I also repurpose those cards too. I like, we're all card makers, right? We can't throw away cards. <laughs> so, but you can't keep oodles and thousands of cards in your, your stamp and arsenal, right? So what I'll do, you guys, and this is a, a trick. I always take a mat and I will potentially glue it over the top or I will glue it over the top. Or if it's a certain type of card, I cut the base off and then I mat it back on a card base and then I give that card another life. And I love giving cards life. <laughs> so, all right. So we did roll call. Are you guys ready to stamp? We're going to stamp, stamp, stamp. So I'll flip the camera down and we're going to make three awesome cards today. Um, for the class today, I do have some kits available. I mentioned on Thursday night that I had one left and um, it's gone, but I've had a few people reach out to me asking for this. So I am making uh, about four to eight more kits, depending on how many people reach out to me. So if this is a class that you guys wanna take, even though it's gonna be passed, I could still send you the kits in the mail. This class for mailing was $17 with the cash option or free with a $35 order. And if you're interested in getting a set of the kits, Either comment in here right now so I can see it and write it down or email me or text me after or Facebook message me after class or during class, however you want to. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, the other thing too, I want to show you guys. I have the next class that's coming up is Thursday, October 21st. Well, no, wait, lied. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I should say the next class is actually mystery night, which is tomorrow night. <laughs> I almost forgot about that. But the next class class with cards is Thursday, you guys. I have sets of this one left too. This is the cutest Halloween sweet class that I'm doing. So if anybody wants to get the kits for this one, they are mailed $20 or free with a $40 order. And you just have to use my current host code for that. So I have some of those left, you guys. And then I also have the whimsy class left. All the details for that one is on my calendar for November 4th. And then I also do have, oh man, I turned, didn't turn my volume off, you guys, on my phone. Hmm, I should probably do that. I also have the Fun Folds class that's coming up. That's going to be October 28th, and all of these are Fun Folds. So if you want more details on that, just reach out to me. That one's also a $20 class or free with a $40 order. This one's awesome. Carissa taught me how to do this one. It's called a pinwheel card, you guys. So it goes like that. And then it flips around and it's an, a traditional A2 size card. So it fits in an envelope. This is a bay window card. Uh, this is a bridge card. And then this one, I don't know. I, I call this one a pull tab. <laughs> it's not a pull tab, but it kind of pulls <laughs> like that. <laughs> so super cool. So you guys, I still have spots for the fun folds. Yay. Okay, so that's a little bit about what's coming up in case you want more stamping with cards. Okay. <laughs> So this was the set that we featured. So Nature's Harvest, it has focal images. It also has stamps that are sentiments. And when Diane and I create the cards for Let's Just Stamp, hi, Melanie Chandler, hi, Jean Benson, we do not include any part that needs to be die cut or embossed. We really want to appeal to beginners uh, that do not necessarily have a cutting machine or an embossing machine. They still want to make beautiful cards that they, you know, you maybe you're not quite ready to make the investment in a die cutting embossing machine, but you're still enjoying making cards and you really want to make pretty cards. One of the tricks that we've learned is to include designer series paper. Um, the designer series paper is from this Nature's Harvest uh, suite of products or the Harvest Medley suite of products. We always try to pull in ribbon and embellishments because of, those are simple little add-ons that you can get that are mo they're mainly inexpensive versus like having dies and embossing folders. Uh, so the stamp set has dies that go with it. So you can see on my Sweet Bundle class, I use the dies to die cut out some of these images like that's all die cutting. I, I love die cutting and embossing you guys. 
Um, yes, Jean, that fun folds card class is going to be awesome. <laughs> so you guys can get dies. There's also an embossing folder. I have these are the dies that go with it. There's also an embossing folder that went with this suite of products that looks like, I don't know if you guys can see it. This class, I did it a couple weeks ago, so you could always go back and watch that video. But we want to show you how you can create beautiful cards with stamps, ink, and papers with adding a little bit of embellishments and some ribbon. Um, so these are the three cards that we're going to make. I'm going to teach you a little bit about coloring. Uh, so we're going to do some blends, and I'm also pulling in a blender pen that we're going to use for coloring. I got that stuff all sitting over here, ready to go. And I just when you pull in different designer series papers, Stampin' Up! lists the colors that go with them. So that's what's so awesome about using their products is that they coordinate their products together so nicely that you don't have to even think. When you want to design something, you can look at the pack of the designer paper and it says Calypso Coral and it says Soft Succulent and it says uh, Misty Moonlight. And so it makes it really easy to create when you have products that coordinate so well together. So which one do you guys want to do first? <laughs> I don't know. I always, ew, man, which one should we do first? Um, let's do this one. Okay, we'll do that one first, and then we'll do the other two next. So so as you guys are watching, hi, Becky Harding. Hi, Anne. Happy belated birthday. It was the other day. I hope you guys had a good celebration. Hi, Wendy Kruger. So you guys, I'm watching this video live with you right now. I, no, I'm not watching this. I'm making this video live with you. I can see your comments. Um... I will put you down for the fun folds, Judy. See, this is it. You guys can, can message me through the comments. And so if you're new to watching me, just know that I watch the, I'm watching your comments with you live. So if you have questions, you can comment. If I don't necessarily see them, somebody else might see them and they can also chime in and answer as well. And so this is your time live with me to watch questions. So what happens if you're watching the replay of this class? If you're watching the replay of this class, I may or may not see your comments come through. And it's always best to reach out to me. If you have questions, text me. My email address is down here. My phone um, number is down here. I'm writing Patricia, or I'm writing Judy down <laughs> on fun folds here so that we don't forget her. So I'm signing up, you guys, and that's just it. Like <laughs> we, we even sign up for class through, <laughs> through the, the video. But you guys, if you really have a question or need to know something, always reaching out to me is a great way versus asking comments. If you know I'm doing the video live, asking comments in here, I'll try to answer them as soon as I see them. Hi, Susie Snow. Hi, Patsy. So yeah, so that's my little trick for you guys about asking questions. Ask away. I try to watch the comments like a hawk and then I try to answer them as fast as I can. And it's always good to, because if you have questions, then others might have the same questions. So as I'm preparing and making things, if you want to know how I do something or what's best about, you know, I'll give you my input and others will also give input. So let's flip back down and we'll get her going. Okay. So let's get the plastic out of here so you guys aren't um, distracted by the plastic. So this is the card we're going to work on first. Oh, I'm so happy you like my cards, Patsy. So Misty Moonlight with the crumb cake. So those that got kits from me, you get an envelope and then all your parts are inside. Now I'm pretty sure for you guys that got kits from me, all of your embellishments, these brushed metallic dots are my favorite from the new mini catalog. All of them, I believe, I can't remember, you guys, I can't remember, honestly, um, if I put all of them in one kit or if I did cut them individually. You guys will have to so let me know. Sometimes I try to put all the embellishments in one envelope, and then um, sometimes they, they go in individual envelopes. <laughs> so, oh, so we got our Misty Moonlight. Okay, so sometimes, you guys, paper comes with a little flaw in it, like this. Do you see that there's a little spot there? It's okay. Um, the way that I'm going to fold this paper that's going to get covered up. So sometimes that happens. It's paper. I mean, it's not always going to be pristine and perfect. Sometimes you'll get those little blemishes and it's okay. Um, this is eight and a half by five and a half and we're going to make it work. It's, your cards are scored. I always score your card bases for you too when you get kits from me. Um, so fold it in half and yours is already folded, but take your bone folder and burnish your edge so it has a nice crisp edge. That's what the bone folder is for. Its primary purpose is to give you a nice crease. Otherwise, you get more of a rolled edge, and so now it's nice and crisp. So a traditional mat for the card is going to be four by five and a quarter. So that is basically a quarter inch off of two sides, giving you an eighth inch mat all the way around. 
and I do that a lot. That's like the most popular, I think, mat size. My insides are four by five and a quarter, unless I do a double mat. Sometimes I will do a double mat. Adding a piece or a layer behind can make it look really pretty too. And so that's what that would look like. But in this case, you guys have a four by five and a quarter mat for your inside, and you have a four by five and a quarter mat on your outside. Sometimes my paper trimmer, or if you guys have a paper trimmer, depending on how it works, you get a little hair that hangs off on the side there. All you have to do is take a scissors and trim that off. Um, sometimes certain trimmers will leave little fuzzies along your card too. If you ever notice that, all you have to do is take your scissors and you can trim those little fuzzies off. I use a guillotine cutter. So a guillotine cutter generally makes a nice crisp edge. So, so here's one thing that, you know, you just have your mat here. Then we have some designer paper. So this, op so the opposite side is this really busy pattern. So generally you want to pick patterns that kind of complement each other. And so we pulled in the misty moonlight and then this one has like, they look like little cottonseed leaves or cottonseed branches <laughs> or the pussy willow branches. That's what that is. And then that brings in the crumb cake. And so I call this like a tri-panel card and this paper when you cut pieces, it, we made it basically is four and a half by three and a half. And then each one of these panels is one and a half inches. And you could do all three of them different. You could, like what we did, we do two on the outside the same. I did something very similar with this Halloween card that is the green one, but I made smaller panels for this one. But that's a cool way to use designer paper is to do the panel look. Okay, then you also have some layers here. You have a very vanilla layer and then another misty moonlight layer. And that's what's gonna go right over the center of this. In your kit, you also have some of the diamond weave ribbon. You're gonna use a piece that goes about here. And then I think my mom cut all of yours this long um, and then you're gonna cut off what you need, but it's basically about six inches and maybe three to four inches. And that's gonna make this knot on the side here. So it's like a fake knot. It's not really part of this. It's actually a separate piece, <laughs> okay? So we're gonna get to our stamping. So the stamping here on this, when you have this vanilla piece like this, it looks very like blah, like plain. You could statter, splatter Stella on it, but it's very light to see it, but there is this stamp in this stamp set that is this marbly look. And so we're gonna do that and we're gonna stamp our flower. Okay, so all of the inks that Stampin' Up! sells, they are all water-based except for one. The one that they sell that isn't water-based is a permanent black stays on pad. But when you have water-based ink pads, um, they clean up really nice and um, they don't like stain things, <laughs> your fingers and stuff, <laughs> you know? So when you're using, so this is a red rubber stamp set and the red rubber has a piece of foam here. And so that foam will provide some extra cushioning cushion when you're stamping, but I always like to put like just a piece underneath here in case. Um, if your table is a rough surface, using something like this, like a piercing mat or a foam mat is good to have underneath, but if your surface is pretty flat, just having a piece of paper is good to have underneath. I think that we're going to put my phone, oh dang it, <laughs> let's go out. There, see my volume was really high. And then we're going to go back in. <laughs> you guys, sorry, you got to watch me do this. But let's see there. I'm live watching again. Okay, there. Now you guys won't hear my Mario ringtone going off all the time. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm a Mario fanatic and Penny sent me this card. So it, it was so cool, you guys. And this is the one for my brother. I got to share it with you. I love it. I have it here and she, she did such a great job. Penny, I love it. So I'm, I'm getting some, some bartering things or some trading cards back for you. <laughs> so, so you guys, when you stamp, when you stamp, you have first strength, second strength, third strength. So you can almost get three different ink colors with one stamp pad. So you can see the first, some people refer to it as generation. I call it strength. It's either a horse or a piece, but your first, second, third. And if you stamped this at first strength, it would be really, really dark. Second strength is good, and then third strength is good too. So what I generally do is I'll use a combination of um, second and then third. And then I'll ink up again, first is gone, and I'll do like a second, 
and then I'll do a third, okay? And then I'll ink up and do another one, and then like that. And so what you're doing is creating a background texture so that it's not so stark, like it's not so plain, right? You're just creating a little bit of that background. And that's what this stamp is awesome to do. It just creates background texture, okay? We are gonna use that on another card as well. So I'll leave that sitting there dirty, <laughs> it's okay. So soft succulent. So the stamp pads that Stampin' Up! has that are all the families of the colors, they're all foam pads. They're the new cases. I find that when you try to open it up like this or you go like this, sometimes you get your fingers in it. The old way is that you open it up this way and then slit it like that. And so that's how I try to teach people to open these up so you don't get ink on your fingers. Like put it so it's backwards and you open it like this and then slide it. When you first get these ink pads, they slide really tough, but as you use them more, they get um, looser. Uh, the other thing is you could put some chapstick, that Burt's Bums Bees Wax in here. Um, Kelly did a tip Tuesday on that, I think last year. So for the soft succulent with these foam pads, you do not need to squish very hard. It's a learning curve. When you have a fabric pad, you squish really hard, but with these, you just, tap 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 you can see i'm not even pushing very hard but look at how much ink i'm gonna get on there like a lot of color comes off it's a hard habit to break but you don't want to squish into these pads you just want to get a little ink and then you come to your paper and you'll stamp your flower one of the things that you want to make sure you do is go straight down straight up don't rock your stamp and I put nice, even pressure. You can see, guys, I'm letting it sit here. We call that marinating. <laughs> Bonnie calls it percolating. But what we're doing is we're letting the ink soak into the paper. And when you do that, it gives the stamped image a nice, solid look to it. Um, don't be afraid to stamp. I see sometimes people go like that, and it doesn't allow the a nice solid image. So don't be afraid of the stamp. That's like my one of my biggest pieces of advice for people who are just starting out. Just be patient with it and give it a chance to, um, to hit the paper. So there are different coloring tools that you can use with this. Don't rock the boat, baby. You know it, Brenda. <laughs> so there's different tools. We could color with blends the, the stem, but the stem to me is really thin and it is the marker tips on the blends are really kind of just a little bit too wide for it. So what I like to pull out, and I, you guys, I'm doing a series on coloring, um, coloring 101, and I don't know at what point, <laughs> there's gonna be four videos on coloring. One of them, I do talk about coloring with a blend. And so when you color with a blend, I'm gonna get a little block here. What I'll do is, so I don't dip into the ink pad, I'll put my block in the ink pad and get a little color on it so that I'm not dipping the marker into it. A blender pen has a solution in it. It's the same tip on both ends, but it operates like a marker. So if you don't have all the different colors for coloring, if you have a blender pen and ink pads, you can use them for coloring. And what it does is it, it creates color that you need for coloring. And because this has a nice um, fine tip on it, it allows you to color in the smallest of little areas, okay? Whereas the blends, the smallest blend tip, there's two blend tips, a thick and a thin. The thinner one is just too wide to color. So for this one, we opted to pull in the blender pen to create the color for coloring in the stem. And so it allows you to just get into those little spots. And then when you're done coloring, you just drag the marker until no color comes out. And you can see now that there's no color there and it was coming out right there. So that's using a blender pen. These come in a set of three for like 10 or $12. I can't remember the exact amount, but all you do is you could use a reinker, or you can just dip your block into the pad to get some color. Okay, so for the flowers though, we actually use Misty Moonlight. And there's a Misty Moonlight here that it matches. So that's another awesome thing about having the Stampin' Up! products is that they coordinate the coloring. Um, so your markers all match, your inks match, the papers match. And so 
In this case, you know what? We actually didn't use a blend. I can tell that now. Ha! Huh. I'm sorry. Look at this. You can see the difference. I'm using a marker to color that. And there we actually used the blender pen. Now that I see it, <laughs> just goes to show you there's different ways that you can create color. So I'm going to take that block and just dip on the opposite corner. <laughs> I'm going to show you the difference here. So I colored with a blend there and you can see it's, it's a little bit darker. We actually took a blend and we colored. So let's say you don't have these blender pens, but you have that, that ink pad. You still can do your coloring with this blender pen. I don't use this blender pen a lot in class, but it serves its purpose. If you're just starting out and you don't want to um, invest or have the money to invest or just aren't ready to invest for whatever various reasons in getting blends like this, if you get your set, uh, um, yourself a set of these markers, you, they're so universal, you can use them with any color ink pad. And it's a small investment if you already have the ink pad. So you can see the difference, not very much difference, but that I used a blend of color and you can see when you use blends, they soak through the back. When you color with this um, blender pen, it doesn't soak through the back. Okay, so that's just a little tip trick on different coloring. Oh, we still need the Misty Moonlight. I'm gonna make this into a thank you card. And that thank you's right here. So when you're stamping sentiments, <laughs> I always advise to practice. And when I practice, I go near the edge of a piece of scrap paper. I pretend like I'm stamping it how I would hold it. And I see if it stamps correctly, like straight. If I see it stamped straight, then I'm like, cool, that works. But if I see that if I'm holding the stamp a certain way and it stamps it crooked, then I know I need to hold the stamp slightly different to compensate for that. But this one looked good. It looked like it'll stamp straight for me. So I'm just gonna go like this. What color's better, the markers or the blender pens? Okay, that's a good question. You can see that they both look the same to me. I used a blender pen there and I use, um, I use the Stampin' Blends there and I use the blender pen there. It depends on how much you wanna work for it, I guess, Linda is my, question, my answer to you. Um, when you color with blender pens, you can just keep coloring. The markers have the color contained in them. But a set of these markers, the set, like two of them cost $9. They sell them as a combo. You get a light and a dark. The coral, you get a light and a dark. So it's $9 per set of markers. Okay, so it's an investment. And little by little, you could start to build up and get a collection of Stampin' Blends. Well, here you would pay 10 or $12, I can't remember how much it is, for a set of three of these. And if you already have ink pads, you have the coloring tools. Now, if you're coloring a big surface area, every time that this runs out of ink, you have to dip and get more ink. Because what happens is, as you're coloring with your block, it gets lighter and lighter. And then you have to go back and get more color. And you have to go back and get more color. And you guys, it's like that. So on something small like this, um, not the blends, the other markers. Um, what's color, the better, the blend? Oh, haha. Ha. okay. I thought you were talking, this is a blender pen. <laughs> so this is a blender pen. Um, these are called Stampin' Blends. I know that's really confusing. Um, but Linda, I just did my Stampin' 101. So I did, I think I'm in week three of the Coloring 101. Last week we did something, the week before. So the, the sec, the, I think the very first one, I went into depth on blender pens, blends, Stampin' Blends, versus the water-based Stampin' Write markers. I think that's what you're asking about. Um, <laughs> that's okay, they're, they're, they're so close in terminology. So I would recommend going back and watching that video. Um, it was from like two Tuesdays ago, um, and I, I go into how they color, and I show you different how they color and what looks better. Honestly, for coloring, I would pick Stampin' Blends because they can blend so nicely. Um, you can just get different tones and different um, depths for the coloring. So, um, and definitely when it comes to coloring with the blender pens, it's like, it's more time consuming. Stampin' Write markers, the water-based ones, you don't get a nice, even, um, as nice of stamping. So I would definitely say, hi, April Train. I would definitely say for coloring blends, the Stampin' Blends, these markers right here are good for coloring. Okay. If, okay. But also Linda, go back. And if you can't find that video, please reach out and I can help you find that video, but go back to my videos. Um, it's the Stampin', I think we call it coloring 101 or color, color something 101. 
and it was in the very first one. Um, if we are on, I think it could have been from October 5th. So, all right, so you guys, that was a little bit of liquid glue. Liquid glue is my favorite type of adhesive, if you ask me. Um, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room so that if you need to move things around slightly, you can. Okay, so let's do a little gluing over here. How I would glue these panels together is I would kind of put them down where I think they need to go so that they're nicely centered. Um, sounds good, Diane. The replay's there forever as long as Facebook lets it be there. So that's awesome that we can watch replays like this. So I'm trying to get an idea of where this is gonna go. So I'm gonna do this one first, this panel, and I'm gonna make sure my margin on the top, the bottom, and the, the left are good. Then you guys, you would instinctly think to think, or you would instinctly think to glue this one next because you're going in order, but no. I go and do the third one or the last one here. And I'm gonna to try to match up where I have the same margin on the top and bottom and now the right, okay? So I've got that kind of figured out. And so then you have a little wiggle room with this glue. So I'm setting this one in here where I think it needs to go. And then I'm gonna get this blue one lined up. And now all I have to do is glue the middle one in here. If you had glued the middle one, sometimes <laughs> like it, it doesn't always get centered so nicely. <laughs> So this is my method to my madness on this one. So I'm just going to set that guy right in the middle, okay? Had you started too far over to the right or the left with this one, it might not end up good on this side. That's why I did it like that. Um, uh, Lisa, the, the vanilla one is about three and three quarters by two and a quarter. And then it's just an eighth inch mat on there. Okay, so grab your tear and tape. Tear and tape is a double-sided tape on a roll. I use that a lot for adhering ribbons, and we're gonna want to put our ribbon down next before we put this mat down. You guys, I get, <laughs> you don't wanna get glue happy and start gluing this mat before you put your ribbon down. And so what happens here, hi, Joanna. So then our, our ribbon's gonna go right about, about an inch up from the bottom. Hi, Sandy. I think I remember that Mike is Sandy. I think, <laughs> but I appreciate you telling me that. <laughs> oh, yeah. You confused me way back in the beginning when you first started watching me, when Mike would be commenting. I'm like, Mike, I have a guy watching? Oh, my God, that's so cool. <laughs> and, and, then, and then it's Sandy. <laughs> so I love it. You, got, you had me going for a little while. So... All right, then, so I did a, a tear and tape sandwich is what I call that. So I've got my double-sided tape now on the top. You guys, when I made cards 20 years ago, when I first started out, I just came across a card from 20 years ago, and I used scotch tape to tape that ribbon down, and <laughs> it was not very sticky anymore. So, okay, so this is going to go onto our mat here, or our card base. So I try to line up the top and the bottom so that I have that eighth of an inch all the way around. And if I do that, then I generally think I should have that side right. Okay, so there's that. Now for taping or adhering this layer on, I popped it up with dimensionals, but you have to be very careful because if you dimensionalize where this ribbon is, this ribbon is already pretty thick. It's about the same thickness as a dimensional. So what I do is instead of putting dimensionals along that bottom line, what I'm gonna do is put the tear and tape down here because again, that diamond weave ribbon is about the same height. It's like about the same height as a dimensional. And then I'm gonna put dimension, oop, it's stuck to my finger. I'll put dimensionals on the top and the middle. And you ask, well, how many dimensionals? I generally like to have dimensionals every inch to inch and a half. I wouldn't just put them on the ends because then you get saggy middle is what we call it. And we know we want a saggy middle <laughs> in our cards and that one needs to come off. And so by doing this, you know, I use double adhesive or like two different types of adhesives on the same car on the same piece here. So that is going to get centered top to bottom, left to right. And lastly, we have the, for the ribbon here, not lastly, but second last, we have our ribbon. All I'm doing is tying it like that into what looks like a knot. So it kind of gives the impression that the ribbon is wrapped around and tied here into a knot. Well, this makes it a little bulky. So if you are afraid of mailing your cards because this gets a little bit high, the rule of thumb is a quarter inch. 
If you think that's too high, you don't even need to put it on. It looks pretty without having it, but if you are gonna put it on, what I would use is a, um, a mini glue dot. And I take that, we call them snot dots. They look like little clear boogers, <laughs> is what they look like. And that will go right like that. Now, I put the one right where the knot is. If your tails aren't going exactly where you want them, you can always take another glue dot and tuck it underneath on the cardstock where, oh, come on, stick on there. Oh, thanks, Penny, for um, taking all your friends. Uh, then I'm going to put one up here as well. And that's going to stick there. And once I have my tails where I want them, that's when I'll grab my ribbon scissors. So I'll, I use a glue scissors, a ribbon scissors, and a paper scissors. And we'll trim our tails here. The last thing I generally do with ribbon is, you know, when I'm done with the card is trim it. We have some of the brushed tanny dots. This is where it's great to pull in your pick tool. It has a putty end. And what you do is it, the little gems or the little guys stick to the putty end. And then it allows you to pick them up and put them on to your card. And we're going to do one more little guy. Three odd numbers is good for embellishments. That's what they say. It's like a floral arrangement. Odds are good. We're not done though, you guys. <laughs> I just remembered we, we have to stamp our inside. So grab that vanilla piece for our inside. We're going to do the flower again. Thanks for sharing, Janice. All right, grab your soft succulent. You know, had I thought of it when I stamped this other one, I would have done, <laughs> I would have done this then. When I stamp thank you cards or make thank you cards, I generally... Oh, we, yep, we're done with that. I generally do not stamp a sentiment. Now, there are plenty of sentiments you could stamp on the inside if you want to. Uh, like, oh, I like thank you for that wonderful thing you did. All that good stuff. I like to write in thank you notes. I like to fill the whole thing full. So I generally won't stamp an extra sentiment in a thank you. And plus, this is going to be a prize for somebody who comments in this video. And I'll announce it next week. And somebody else will get this card. And then if they want, they can stamp something in the inside. Let's see if I have any blue left. I don't know if I do. So <laughs> thanks for sharing, Jewel. All right, so let's grab just a little bit more ink. This becomes your little color palette here. And just add a little color. Now, you don't have to color the insides, but I think it really finishes it off when you color the inside focal image that you have. Oh no! <laughs> so, so Penny, you just squeezed your Stella pen over your card. So, Stella had a blowout, is what we say <laughs> when that happens. Um, it happens. Hi, Karen. Forward. Thanks for sharing. So, Stella had a blowout. So, if you guys are wondering what Stella is, Stella is a glitter pen that is um, for adding glitz to your cards. Oh man, that happened to me the other day too. It shouldn't happen like that. I don't know <laughs> what's going on, but Stella adds a little bit of glitter to your card. And so what Penny just said is she had a blowout. She was squeezing it and it just came out all over her card. So one thing with Stella is you don't ever squeeze her while you're working on your cards. You you move it uh, like over to a different area and squeeze over something else. <laughs> so when I do my liquid glue, I generally do just around the edges, not too far that it's too close that glue oozes it out. You don't ever want your glue oozing all over on you. And then that gets glued on the inside. So the, the thing I love about the liquid glue is you can see I'm kind of wiggling this around. You have about 10 seconds to wiggle it just a little bit till you get it exactly where you want it. Thanks for sharing, Sue. I appreciate it. Thanks for sharing, Melanie. And that's it, you guys. A simple card. The Just a little focal image, sentiment three strips of designer paper. Now, if you wanted to step this card up a little bit, you could have embossed this background piece and we wanted to so bad. That time-worn embossing folder would have been so cool having that peeking around the edge. So there you go, you guys. We got our first card done. We talked about adhesives. We talked about second strength stamping. We got we got through it, woohoo. I'm glad that you like this one, Susan. It's a, it's a pretty set. All right, so I think we're done with that. And we're going to work on the Calypso Coral card next. Okay, so, so simple, but so pretty. That's exactly what you guys were trying to go for. 
we all know that there's way, there's so many ways to go over the top with cards. We get that. We can keep adding and adding and adding. And you think you got to keep adding and you don't have to keep adding. Sometimes less is best. And in this case, like we kept it simple too. No die cutting, no embossing, but we love layers. One of the things that we do love is layering so that it adds depth and then adding that little bit of pretty designer paper on here. Yeah, and definitely. If you guys are at home and you have this set of kits and you haven't put your cards together you could, and you have the time-worn embossing folder or tasteful textiles or subtle, any little embossing on the back here would have like just taken this card one more notch into it. So um, this, what did I stamp in the background? Jewel, it's actually part of the stamp set. It's this little grungy thing um, that comes in the stamp set. And we're going to use it one more time on the, set, the last card. It's it's in there. So I loved that part of this card. Um, I, yes, Jewel, I have a hard time keeping it simple too. You guys know it. Like I love to add layers and keep going and just, you guys know I'm not a simple stamper. Um, and I would say that that's okay. Everybody has a different style. Everybody likes different things. And I just know that I'm not a simple stamper and I love simple stamping when it looks like it still looks wow to me. So simple stamping has a, oh, I should probably clean this little guy too. You guys, this is called a chamois. It's called the Stampin' Chamois. Um, it's purple and then it gets ink on it and it turns different colors, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can see. And you just keep it hydrated and wet and I use it to clean my stamps. Now those stamps I used to throw out. <laughs> All right. So that guy's done. We'll use thank you again here. So in your kits, you guys, this is Calypso Coral. Coral. Um, it come, this one's a white envelope where the last one I had a, a vanilla envelope for you. And on this one, in your kits, you guys have your base, which is eight and a half by five and a half. You guys, you know, if you follow me, watch me, I love the traditional A2 size cards that are hamburger styles folded in half. <laughs> now, the difference on this one is that it's a horizontal card, just like the last one. I don't do, we don't do, we do more vertical up and down cards, I think, in general. So this is horizontal. In your kit, you guys, you have two pieces of basic white. They are the same size. They're four by five and a quarter. And we made them both the same size so that you don't have any confusion. One goes on the inside, one goes on the outside. All right, so that's what we have there. You also have in your kit your piece of designer paper, which is five and a quarter by probably two if I had. Nope, it's an inch. It is two, two inches. Two inches is a good number because you get... Oh, do you throw the chamois in the laundry? Yes, definitely. You guys, we were just talking about it yesterday in class that these chamois, where are I anyway, put it over here. These chamois, if you keep them wet all the time, they have water in them, right? So water after a while gets this musty smell. Do not be afraid to throw them in your washer um, with some laundry detergent or, or just even bleach, like a light, mild bleach to bleach them out. I honestly haven't bleached mine yet, but I have taken and I've washed them in the washer. They need a good refreshing every now and then. <laughs> okay. Hi, Karen Jane from Erie, Michigan. So you have five and a quarter by two. And then you have here some mats. Um, my cutters will do that. That guillotine cutter I have will leave. You see that, you guys? It leaves that little hairy thing on the edge. <laughs> and I see that I just trim it off. Um, and it doesn't always do that. So um, this layer right here, let's see if my notes say it. Uh, the coral is two and three quarter by three and three quarter. And your white is two and a half by three and a half. So that'll go there. In your kit, you also have a piece of this white ribbon, which is from the flowers of every season ribbon combo pack. And you have just a strip. You guys, this is a scrap. When you cut your mats down, you end up with a half inch scrap <laughs> on the end. And that's all that is. It's half inch by whatever length you need it to be. If you guys do a shorter sentiment, great. If you do this one, it says sending healing thoughts. May nature's beauty bring peace to your soul. Um, do you wash the chamois by themselves? You know, I'm not going to run a hole here. So like if I'm going to be do washing towels or bedding, I'll throw it in with that. Um, it's water-based ink and it gets so diluted. Like you probably rinse it out first in your sink. So you get any kind of ink, residual ink out. And I don't do a load of laundry with just the chamois in it. I think that's a lot of water that gets used. So if you're just going to want to give it a light little washing, put it in the sink. Like, like 
run it through the sink. Oh, you can't even see it. Like that's the sink I generally use to wash them. But if you're gonna put in the laundry, I would definitely add it to like your towels, your dirty like dish towels, or your husband's socks and underwear and work clothes. I would put the chamois in with something like that versus my good um, work clothes. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's just me being picky like that. But um, it's a chamois and it's used for ink. And I don't want to get like that on anything, but like your laundry with bedding. Like I would throw it in with my bedding because <laughs> I don't care about my bedding, but I wouldn't put it in with my nice work shirt. <laughs> if that makes sense, you guys. Okay. So hi, Kay Weir. Hi, Shauna Burns. Okay. So here, this one, we're going to be using espresso ink with these two stamps. So this focal image and this sentiment, and we're using early espresso, early espresso. Yes. Pink socks. You'll get <laughs> pink socks, Robin. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Terry Costin. So we're going to use early espresso and we're going to stamp. Let's get stamp happy instead of glue happy right now. So I'm going to grab a new little piece of paper here, put that down, and we're going to stamp. So on my inside here, you guys, I have one of those flowers. Flower from Bambi. So we're going to ink up. So again, I'm not pushing very hard into my ink, just lightly tapping on here. And I'm going to put these flowers. So I'm getting it so that this one leaf is not a random stray thing coming out. I'm going to stamp it so that leaf is not onto my image. You know, Sue, I would honestly just wash them with something that you don't care so much about. <laughs> but I wouldn't wash it by itself and go through a whole washer full of water just for one chamois. If that's going to happen, use your kitchen sink and plug it and then put a little soft, mild bleach water in there and then wash it around there or some soap, like antibacterial soap. Um, use color catchers in the wash. Yes, there you go. So there's that. And then on this guy too, we're going to stamp. Now with the flowers, I love flowers to not be floating out of the earth. Hi, Anna Rabidou. So when I stamp this, I want my flowers to come like that they're coming out of the page versus having a light little gap um, one of my uplines, Doris Fryman, my upline before she left Stampin' Up, she always taught me about things being grounded and growing out of things versus floating in outer space. Now, things can be floating in outer space. <laughs> it's okay, but I generally like to do things that are grounded. So this one's higher. So I want to make sure that that one is near the bottom of the edge. And I'm just, you know, you guys take your time. You want to get it right and don't be rushed. So here I'm going to hover over the top until I see it's where I want it. Hi, Judy Bobo. You get it exactly where you want it. And then now let that ink transfer. Flow, flower floating out of the earth. Yes. <laughs> so there you go. So when I stamped that, I made sure that that left flower stem here was, was, um, was hanging out down below. So I'm going to leave this because I think, oh, and we need that for the next card. But our sentiment is right here. So as long as we have our ink open, grab your little strip of paper. Now this, you guys, is going to be super hard. I promise you, it'll be a little bit difficult <laughs> getting that straight on this piece of paper. So practice. So I'm hovering over the top. I'm thinking it's straight and it's straight. Oh my goodness. Okay. So now you have to do that. It's so crazy because you always get it right or good at good on your practice strip. And then it's like, oh man, now I got to do it here. I am not going to go white on white is so hard. You guys so look at that. Like it's so hard to see the edge. So hi, Pauline. So I actually think I'm going to use this as, it's okay, you guys, I'm going to use it as a backer that adds color because now you can see the edging of the white and I'm going to try to do that exactly the same way on my little strip of white. You saw that? I took time. I eyeballed it until I got it where I want it and now I'm going to give it a second and see how I did. Okay, it's good. It's straight, but had I come down a hair more, my S wouldn't be hanging out the top. So I'm going to try again. You guys, there's two pieces or there's two sides to every piece of paper. Generally, you can stamp on both sides. So I'm going to bring this down a hair more and see if I can give myself some little extra room on the top. Thanks for sharing, Feline. I appreciate it. I'm going to give myself a little room on the top. Oh, man, there it is. Okay, so you see that? I brought, the, I brought it down just a hair so that the S isn't hanging off the top. And did you see how I added color behind the white versus white? You can't see the edge of your white paper as easily if you're stamping white on white. So that's a little trick for stamping as well, you guys. Now coloring, let's get color happy. Blends. The blends I pulled in for this one are Old Olive, and it's honestly, it doesn't matter if you do 
light or dark. The area that you're coloring in is so little that honestly, if you did all light or all dark, it really doesn't matter. If you wanted to do a little light and dark combination in the leaves, you could do that. Um, generally, when you get an area this small or I get an area this small, I just color the whole thing the same color, the, like either light or dark. But you could have pulled out your light old olive and mixed in here and got some depth. But I think that it'll look good all one color. So these are blends. They are meant for shading. That's why there's a light and a dark. But in this case, I'm my leaves are all going to be the dark old olive. Okay, so when you stamp that, you get that color on the back. Okay, so I did two colors for the CD part on the top. I did bronze, and the bottom I did bronze, so like the bottom half of that circle, I did the bronze, and then on this one, it was that little weird part right there. And then cider, a lot, I have, this is dark cider. Let's see what dark cider, yep. So I'm gonna do dark cider over the whole thing because I want there not to be a, a line definition between the two colors and then this little bottom part and then the whole ball thing is cider okay so that's how I did the top of that cone flower two-tone browns so what did I do for the flower part I pulled in coral and daffodil and I do the coral first and on this one I did the tips more coral but it also looks really cool doing coral closer closer to the top here and you could do dark coral or you could do light coral just depends on how pronounced you want the coral to look but I'm just doing coral coral closer to the ball part then daffodil so I'm gonna do daffodil over the whole thing and you when you do the whole thing it kind of blends in and you lose some of the coral that's why the dark coral actually kind of makes it pop a little bit. So you can see by having, there's just a hint of pink on the top, okay? So let's grab the dark coral though, so you guys can see. Let's see, let's see, here it is. I think this is dark coral. Okay, I'm gonna put this with the dark coral closer to the tips there. You can see that the coral comes through more. And again, I'm gonna use yellow over the top of the coral because that's gonna help it blend in. Okay. So think of all the different cone color combinations you guys could create just by blending a couple of different colors together. Misty, moonlight would be pretty. You know, it's a card, you guys. You can make it however you want, but you see how the difference where there I added dark coral and there I had the light. The light kind of got washed away, but they're blends. So you guys can go back and add more color. So I just added some lines of the dark coral, but they look blotchy, right? They don't look like they're blended good. So just grab your yellow and blend over the top of them again. And that will get rid of that blotchiness or the solid block look that I had. And now it warmed it up get light like that there you go okay so I'm not gonna color in the inside but <laughs> I'm not gonna take the time to do that now you guys that's how I colored these so you can see like color the inside though when you're doing yours at home and I think that we're at the part where we can get glue happy so this is how I would glue this together now this is me being how I am. <laughs> there's actually, you guys, there's no glue right here. You can see that? That's not even glued. So this ribbon gets tucked underneath that, that layer. But you don't want to have to guess how, where you need, because normally what you would do is like, oh, where should I put this ribbon? How high does it need to go? Well, it all depends on how, where this lay, lays. And it, so you don't have to guess. What I like to do is I'm going to glue the bottom edge and put glue just like this. I'm not putting adhesive right here. But you could, if you wanted to um, have adhesive there, you could prep yourself with a little tear and tape. Watch this, this is where you could use two different adhesives at the same time. You could prep yourself with tear and tape here 
but I would not peel it off yet. Okay, you're just prepping it. So now what you're gonna do is grab this mat here, the white mat, and you're gonna adhere this, okay? So again, we don't have any adhesive here, so we can tuck our ribbon. If you have your, your designer paper just a hair long, now's your chance to take your scissors and trim it. You know, you'd rather have a little long than a, a little short, okay? So now we're gonna take tear and tape. <laughs> you guys, this is scrap paper for me. I generally don't let paper go to waste. So this was an old DSP sampler page that was printed wrong. <laughs> so I always use up that paper. So we're putting a tear and tape sandwich together. So a little tear and tape on the back of that. And now what we can do is slip our ribbon behind and get it as much or as little as, so you can go up, you could go down, you could have a little showing, you could have, you can't even see it because it's white on white, but you could have a little showing, you could have a lot showing, right? Now you can work with it until you get it exactly where you want. And from the front, I eyeball it, tuck my tail over, and now you've got this ribbon tucked underneath, but now grab that tear and tape and voila, it's actually glued all the way near the top. Perfect, okay? Then we're gonna add, I'm gonna cut that off a little bit so it's not so hangy there. I'm gonna put the tear and tape over the top of my tails. I find that I see, I see people not looking at the front, but gluing the tails back, and they're not looking at it if it's straight on the front. You always wanna, I always like to look at the front so I know it's straight, okay? And then take off that tear and tape, and we're gonna add a little more liquid glue around the edges. And I don't go where I put the tear and tape because there's already adhesive there. And that gets picked up. Put that on your card front. Just like that. Then this guy gets a little glue Again, I don't go more, like I stay about a good half inch away from the edge because if you put it thick, it might ooze out. And I know people don't like liquid glue all over their fingers. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Laura likes that way. Good. So I'm glad I taught you guys something about how to do that ribbon like that. Then we have more dimensionals. So I'm going to grab those. I like, I used to not like the big dimensionals because they're too big. I'd always cut them in half. So I started using the little dimensionals. Perfect, right? <laughs> because they're half the size. But they, I put more on. <laughs> so I just went back. I really like the larger dimensionals now. Okay, so then this guy's gonna go on our right side of our card, something like so. Now for your banner, your strip here, I just used a scissors. Um, ribbon, I don't use, but glue or paper would be fine. And I just, Cut them at a slant, and I'm gonna get them slanted the same way, <laughs> like this. Okay, <laughs> that was hard. I was like, which way do I need to go? Okay, so something like that, and then this gets adhered onto your front of your card. Now, you've already popped this side up, so this is where, again, I'll do multi-adhesive. I'll put a dimensional, on the end here, and then I'll figure out, I'll do one more right there, and then liquid glue on this side. Because this side's already popped up, if we put another dimensional, it'll kind of be crooked, like at a slant. And so that's gonna go right about there, okay? And then this one uses, you guys, so there's three different colors. There's gold, copper, and like a tan color. So the last card, we use the tan ones. This one, we use the copper because the copper looks so complimentary with the coral. So you either got too big and a small or you got too small and a big. And so we'll put one there, one here, and right there. That looks good. And then, so the take your pick tool has a point on one end and then it has a spatula on the other end and then putty there for picking up. There's also a stylus that goes with it too that can be interchanged out. So we just gotta glue our inside in 
like that. And voila, we have our second card. A nice, simple card. That is really pretty. Think of this, just this, this pattern, this layout. A piece of two inch by five and a quarter DSP is what makes this one pop on the back. Having a little colored mat, or a white mat on a colored card base, and then whatever your focal image. This would be a great mystery card layout card. <laughs> so, all right. We have our second card done. Last, but certainly not least, is our soft succulent card. You guys like it, lots of hearts, woohoo! Okay, so this guy had a vanilla base to it. So you guys got your vanilla envelope going with this one. And we're gonna use this guy again. And your kit here, oh, you guys, I lied. I thought we were gonna use this stamp again, but <laughs> it was with this one. I stamped that, and it's hard to see it, but I put that texture on, oh, you can see it right there. I stamped this background on there. So that's, so I don't think I'm done with that one because I'm looking at this one and I'm like, hmm, there isn't that stamp on here. So soft succulent is your card base, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Grab your bone folder. Every card that I make, I use a bone folder. You don't have to use a bone folder. Some people use their glue and they go like this. That works too. I just like having the bone folder. <laughs> Vertical card. Oh, I have some stamping done already. So inside mat, four by five and a quarter. It's already stamped, perfect. So we have to stamp our cone flower and our sentiment. Now this sentiment, I think I made this one a little wider. I should say we made this one a little wider. I feel like that last one was a half inch. This one's three quarter inch. So you get yourself a little more room to work with. <laughs> okay, you have a little piece of diamond weave ribbon that will go back there. These three or two pieces are three by four, actually. They are verse, like you could do them both mint if you wanted, but the, we, did, we did the crushed curry with the mint. And you guys, there are words on these. Got to make sure that you do it right. Not upside down is what I mean. Don't, it, you know, so just look at it. One's going to go on the top, one's the bottom. Three by four. That's a good size for 12 by 12 paper because you get three by four gives you 12 of these little rectangles. Okay, so that'll go on our card front like that, okay? All right, so we're gonna stamp our cone flower. So I think it's cone flower. I keep calling it a cone flower. Somebody would correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's cone flower. <laughs> okay, grab your espresso ink. And again, you guys, we're gonna have our flowers grounded. So hover over the top till you get it where you want it, like so. Hi, Barbara Bargau. How's it going? I saw your post. I'd bring you donuts. I know you're up at 6.30 or 7. I'd come and check on you if I live closer <laughs> and bring donuts. Your post was adorable. It made, I showed it to Tyler and we both laughed. <laughs> All right. So then we have our sentiment here. Again, because it's vanilla, I might just do this. And you guys, I'm going to see how I do stamping it this way. Bring it down just a hair and see once what happens here. Oh, I love it. It's perfect. <laughs> that doesn't always happen, you guys. I, mean, I may show it like it does, but it doesn't always happen that way. <laughs> More like 3.30 a.m. you were up. Oh, my goodness, you guys. I was just thinking, of, like, I think I went to bed at 1.30. <laughs> so, all right, trim your end here at a diagonal. Do that on the other side. So that's ready to go for us. And... We, let's get a little glue happy. I want to get some pieces glued. We can. We'll color in a little bit. I'm not ready for coloring right now. <laughs> All right. So we're going to glue this one. And let's get glue happy here. We're going to flip these over. There's nothing holding us back. You guys, as long as there's no ribbon that needs to get tucked down or um, anything like of that matter, we can get a little bit glue happy. So we have less pieces hanging out in front of us. Hi, Danny. How are you doing, girlfriend? Your coffee posts are always fun to, to watch, too, when they come through on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Barbara, you were in bed at 1.30 and you got up at 3.30? I think it's nap time. <laughs> All right, so that one's gonna go here. This one, make sure your words are the right way. And that one's gonna go here. Don't worry about this middle part, that'll get covered up. So this will end up going on here like that. So let's get a little color. You guys, we went through coloring on the last one. We did not change it up. 
We kept the coloring the same. So you have your old olive for your leaves on this one. You wanna be gentle with your marker tips. The harder you press on them, the more that they will get demolished um, faster. They are um, a consum their cons markers are considered consumable items. They're like adhesive, you do go through them. Like the gentler you are to them, the longer they will last. Putting the covers back on them right away will help them last longer too. Um, if you do end up with a marker that gets dried out or the brush tip gets bad because you've been using a lot, you just buy a new set of them. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the dark coral first instead of the light. And you see I'm drawing little lines down so that it's not all uniform, like that. And then we'll do a little bit of the light, just a little bit to bring in some extra color. And then we do the yellow. And remember the yellow goes over the whole thing because that will blend the coral and calm that coral down a little bit. Reminds me of a sunset. These are perfect sunset colors. Okay, we'll get this little guy here. And then we gotta do our seedy part or our middle part. So you guys, you know what I have after this? <laughs> we have a celebration celebration party. So my team is the Be Happy Stampers and I like to reward my silvers and above. So I have about eight silvers on my team and we get together twice a year and those who qualify as still being silvers on October 1st and April 1st are invited to my place or via Zoom if they're not local and we do a pizza party generally. So we're, we've got some Papa Murphy's pizza and Carissa's mom made a dessert and Diane's bringing some fruit and I think Cheryl's bringing something. And we make cards together, we chat and laugh and have fun and socialize. And it's just a little extra perk of being on my team and being a silver, oh, Na Naughty Nancy's gonna be here as well. A little extra perk for being on my team and being a silver. So um, the Be Happy Stampers, you guys, we have 75 people now on my team. Isn't that crazy? It just blows my mind. We had 14 newbies after the last celebration. And we had 14 newbies after the last celebration. So we have grown so much this last year. It's amazing. So you guys, if you ever have questions about joining my team as a discount shopper or as crazy like I am, you just reach out to me and I can help you with that. But I don't know if you can see it, but there's little splatters, right? Uh, little splatters. So we wanted little splatters on here just to give it a little bit. So it's, otherwise it's super, super stark on the back. So how do you do that? We are gonna grab a baby wipe, or a wet wipe, or a flushable wipe, whatever you wanna call them. And <laughs> we're going to clean off this little block over here, okay? And we're gonna dip into our brown one here. And we're gonna grab our Stella pen. Stella was not out on a date this time. She was working hard for us today. So you dip in your Stella, and you get a little brown in the cover, or in her tip of the brush tip. And you gotta be careful where you do this because you end up with splatter everywhere. But I grab a scissors and I hold it and then I tap my Stella. Cool beans, I love doing this, you guys. This is so fun. Look at this. What it did is it added a little texture to the back, random splotches of early espresso with Stella. So cool. Okay, then when you're done with that ink color, you just wipe out your Stella pen. It looks, it, it kind of operates like a blending brush or a blending pen, and then you're done. <laughs> so you gotta be careful though, because if you look, that splattered all over this piece of paper. It really did. <laughs> so you need a big area on the background to like kind of keep her contained. It's all the way up here too, you guys. There's Stella everywhere. So, all right, so give her a second to dry. And what you'll do is you can flip that over. You see that? The, mo the darker the back looks, the better coloring you did on the front is what I hear. Okay, so there that. And this will go on to here. 
We cannot forget to put our ribbon on the back. And so grab your tear and tape for that one. Oh, I just lost it. There it is. So if you guys have a pretty stark background and you need something added for texture, just to make it so it's not so like clean looking. <laughs> you know, we, we have to fill space all the time. We have to fill those voids, right? So <laughs> there's a lot of vanilla all over. So we took and splattered it. So just keep that as an option. So I put my tear and tape on the back and my ribbon is going to have my tails tucked behind. Now, I'm gonna add more tear and tape over the top of that, but I am not going to pick these tails off or these, the, the waxy paper. I'm actually gonna leave them there because I wanna pop this up with dimensionals. If I took that waxy paper off of the tear and tape, it would want to stick flat there and I want it to not stick flat there, I want it to be popped up. So in this case, I use my tear and tape as single-sided tape. You guys, I'm just putting lots of them on here. They're just dimensionals. They're a very inexpensive way to add depth to your card with popping them up, popping up the piece. Okay, so this will just get put on the front of our card, centered, top to bottom, left to right. Okay, so here we have our diamond weave ribbon and the sentiment going over the top again. So what are we gonna do? Just like that last card, I'm gonna put tear and tape on the bottom because of that ribbon being there. But again, we only need a little bit because you don't wanna put adhesive hanging over the edge. So I'm pretty sure that's the bottom, yep. So that's gonna go right here, right? Cause that's gonna be right there. And then we're gonna put dimensionals on the top. Now, a great way to do this is cutting off some of your end piece so that you create yourself a little strip like this. And that'll go right there near the top. And don't worry about the you know, the, that little bit hanging over. If you wanted to, you could put dimensionals on there. So let's just get this on here. I'll show you what I mean. We want just a little bit of that diamond weave ribbon hanging out. Depending how your sentiment is, I got one kind of meat in there and one here. If you wanted, you could put a dimensional right on that end there. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab a little dimensional for right here. Put it right on the end. That'll help support that. that so it doesn't get bent down. All right. Embellishments. And I think we're almost done. Okay, grab your tool, your pick tool. We're gonna go for the gold this time, you guys. The gold goes really good with the, the crushed curry. And that one's gonna go there. Oop, come on, little guy. And then we got one off to the side there. And just like that, you guys, we have our, oh, we can bring Stella out though, hang on. We can Stella these cone flowers a little bit, just to give a little glitz. All right, how is that for a third card? Easy layout again, a focal image and a sentiment. The DSP is what brings it home, I think, as the background. So we've got that one and this one. So you guys, for those that are just beginning stamping, I really hoped that taught you a little bit about different adhesives, a little bit about coloring, inking up. Easy layouts, you guys, just layers help. Like just adding a few layers, you know, so generally three layers is a good amount or more. So we've got like one, two, three, four, five layers for that one. One, two, three, four, five, six layers. One, two, three, four, five layers. You know what, you guys, if you look at my cards, I generally do five to six layers. When you add layers, it just makes cards go wow. Um, layers with one and two, cards with one or two layers look great too. It just depends what you do to them. Um, so Sue enjoyed the presentation, yay! So you guys, this Facebook video can always be found um, in the Cards by Christine Facebook page. It'll be called Let's Just Stamp, um, Nature's Harvest Stamp Set. And you guys can catch it on YouTube. I always uh, put them on YouTube within a day or two or three after. Um, so that you can always find them on YouTube too, in case you were, you're looking around there. But oh my gosh, they're such fun cards. This Nature's Harvest Stamp Set was awesome to work with. I've done so many pretty cards with it. It's just so versatile. 
And they also have a good luck sentiment in here and a reminder to never forget how much you mean to me and so many others. It's so pretty. I know Bonnie would say mush mush, but, <laughs> but it's a good sentiment too. I just, I love this, this image right here. So, um, so yeah, you guys like it. Yay. Hi, Gwen Pratchett. So you guys, I decided that for the door prize for this class, um, we had two people that placed orders to get these cards for free. It was, um, Jeannie Terwilliger and Barbara Barco. So I think to share the love, um, cause Barbara won the door prize from Thursday night's class and Thursday night's class was the monthly class. So Barbara, you just won a door prize. So instead of doing a random gener gen number generator for Jeannie and Barbara, I'm going to by default give Jeannie the door prize because I can. <laughs> I'm the boss <laughs> and Barbara just got a prize and she hasn't even gotten it yet. So I don't know if you're still watching, Barbara, if you saw that you won a door prize from class on Thursday night. So Jeannie will get the door prize for class tonight for placing or this afternoon for placing an order. So perfect on that. So you guys, for my team, oh, I thank you for sharing it two times, Sue. So for my team, though, you guys, I do a challenge um, with the Be Happy Stampers twice a month, um, the 1st through the 15th, and then the 16th through the last day of the month, and it all depends on um, something. Like, this last one was, what inspires? The changing seasons inspire, like, and share a picture of what inspires you, and so I wrote down everybody's name, except for I looked at it, like, a half hour before the end of the night. And I just, I'm looking back really quick. I have Linda Hodge and Vanessa also commented at the end of the last minute of the last hour. Um, April Drain, you did as well. So we'll put you on here too. So I had 13 of my bees that commented. So I'll share this, you guys. This is what gives inspiration to my team here. So we had to share a picture. And so the beach and coffee and um, wintry. Um, outdoor, you can see here, the woods was Ann Miller, nature was Kelly, that pretty picture, flowers for Wendy, Kathy Jackson was leaves, Anna was pretty flowers. Oh, I love that flower right there. This was mine, you guys. I love sunsets. It makes me want to pull out those blending brushes. Um, Linda was peacefulness of a train ride, and Vanessa was ink blending and sunsets. April was this beautiful um, field. So you guys, I love to inspire and I love what sharing what you guys are inspired by. So my, my team shared that. And so I have 13 people and we're going to do a random number generator for a prize for somebody on my team to get a happy prize. So let's have you guys watch me do this. So in case you are on my team and you're watching right now, I have 13 people that um, were part of the challenge goes to number 12. Vanessa, Vanessa Saylor, you are the lucky winner of a prize from me out of my vault. <laughs> so congratulations. I, you guys, I sent a reminder, right? Like two hours left to go on the 15th. And I think three of you came in right at the end. So Vanessa, you are the lucky winner. Let me circle your name so I don't forget. I'll be seeing you, I think on Tuesday, you're coming to class with Diane. So, all right, so I have a prize for you. And then you guys, I have, let's get back to the video and I'm gonna share with you Cards by Christine. I also want to share with you who the winners of the last cards were. Let's get back in the video because I always like to watch your comments in the video versus the video up here is always blah for me. <laughs> I don't say it track. Stay watching it so good. So yes, congratulations to Jeannie Terwilliger and to Vanessa. And then also you guys, let's see here. Let's pull that up. Okay. So I'm going to flip down here. So I have these cards from class, which was a couple weeks ago. I had drawn some winners. So if you like, or how it works is I can't see the likes so much, but if you comment or share, I can see that. And when you guys comment and share, I take those names and I draw winners for the cards. So I always love to give away the cards that I make in class to lucky people. And so I have here this card. And you guys, oh, I love to do the drum roll. Brrr. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Betty Ray, oh my gosh, I don't know how to say your last name. I pulled this and I'm like, how am I going to say this? It's G-J-E-R-N-E-S-S. Geerness? Geerness? I'm not so good. So I apologize in advance for not saying that correctly. All right. Da -da -da! Winner, winner is Kathy Jones Irvin. You're the lucky winner of this card. Oh, this was my favorite one you guys i love this cork paper and it's back in stock right now it's no longer on back order so brrr, winner winner chicken dinner mary schreiber you're the lucky winner of this one mary schreiber 
And last, but certainly not least, this was a very pretty card too. Drum roll, please, is Mary Carl's. Woohoo! So, Mary, I have your information. I know where to send this card to. But for Mary and Betty and Kathy, I don't have your addresses. So if you know any of those lucky ladies, you can reach out to them and let them know that I need their addresses because if without an address, I don't know where to send the cards, you guys. I don't spam you. <laughs> I just send cards with my schedule so that you know what's coming up. And so I just need to get your addresses so that I send the cards to the right people. So woohoo! All right. So Jeannie, for your door prize, how it works is the next class that you take with me, I put your door prize in with that next class. So door prizes are either for porch pickup or the next time you take a class, then that's where you'll, so you'll expect that in your next prize or um, your next class that you get. I see that this is this showing, so we need to get that back. I wore my bee necklace today because we have the celebration celebration coming up. So, all right, you guys, that was a good class. Woohoo! It stayed shorter because I didn't go through the in-depth. So just remember, if you're watching this and you want to see more about the in-depth working for beginners, go to July 25th, The Blossoms in Bloom, Let's Just Stamp. And you guys can watch that video. All my videos, you guys, I started doing videos on March 23rd of last year. So there's a lot of videos that you guys can watch if you want more stamping fun with me. So, all right, you guys have a good rest of your day and we will see you. You'll see a tip Tuesday on Tuesday and you'll see me tomorrow night for mystery card night. I almost forgot, but I don't forget. It'll, I'll be here at 6 p.m. Central <laughs> so that we can go through your clues. If you are looking for clue one, go to cardsbycrispy.com and you can go to the event for tomorrow, which is October 18th and you'll find clue one or it's in Facebook events as well. So, oh, Cindy, you're so welcome. I love sharing my talents and me with you guys. I have been doing this for a long time. I'd have to say now to over 20 years and I'm still learning stuff. And it's just so much fun to share this with you guys because when you can make and create, you feel good. And it takes, I was talking to Linda about it. Uh, it takes your mind off of things and it's just, they're very therapeutic and yet you can make something and share that love with others in your lives. And everybody loves handmade these days. It's not uh, you, it's not bought and you buy the things to make it, but it comes from the heart. And so that's, what's awesome about it. So, all right, you guys, we will see you later. I'm going to go get some pizzas cooking and kind of get ready for, for my silvers that will be here. So I got to put my tiara on too. So, all right, you guys, we'll see you later. Love you sunshine and hugs to you. Bye.